so much for being with us this evening, those of you who are here live, and all of you who are at home in the comfort of your own home with hopefully some delicious drink nearby and some snacks. We have a very fun program for you, at least it's fun for us, and with my very favorite colleagues, uh, Michael and John, being so brave and um, creative to read off of a lot of piano scores to make this program uh, really fun and varied. We really also thank you for always giving your funds and donations uh, as you do for everything that you attend in Washington and, and beyond. Um, donations really keep music alive in so very many ways. It keeps this series alive. It keeps us employed barely through this, this pand pandemic, so we're really so grateful in, in just multiple ways. The program this evening is, yes, it's eclectic, but you know that's what we get to do when we're looking at a thousand years of music now in our lives. So we have that wonderful advantage of so much music to draw on. We begin with early music, which, yes, would have been most likely played on the lute, um, but guitar by the middle of the 17th century was becoming the popular instrument. So we start with two pieces that are very perfect uh, uh, for the guitar, even though theorbo and lute might very well have been present in those pieces. Michael will speak about his piece before he uh, performs this very sweet um, Dowland piece. Those of you who are at home do have program notes to look at, so I don't want to be too redundant and also save my voice for singing. So here we go. Thank you. Thank you. 
transcribed for the classical guitar by Frederick Node, written by John Dowland. And it's a short piece called Tarleton's Resurrection. And in fact, I think it was one of the first Renaissance lute pieces that I ever learned when I was a freshman in college all those years ago. And I have just a little backstory about the history of this piece, uh, and I'm reading from the text. This piece is, in fact, a lament for the famous clown Richard Tarleton, <coughs> believed by some to be the person Shakespeare had in mind when he wrote, Alas, Poor Yorick, Speech in Hamlet. And this source is a manuscript lute book known as the Wickenbrook, now in the possession of Yale University. So, Tarleton's Resurrection. Thank you.
but you might not really know that, that the sound of these next two pieces, which I did perform here in November with Mary Beth Gowan in the original version of piano and voice. These work really beautifully, however, with a sort of early music approach. They are neo-baroque pieces, as you will hear. Um, the A Cloris is reminiscent of um, the piece that has been nicknamed Box Air on a G string, right? So um, that was actually a title given by another composer who arranged that beautiful um, adagio. In any case, it's beautiful, fanciful, and, and high-level poetry uh, of, of beautiful and rather adoring love. Sure. 
Django Reinhardt, the late great uh, guitarist, and Stefan Grappelli, the late great violinist, and this is a tune called Nuage.
Special guitars for special keys. Yes. Marvelous to have that many. How many guitars do you have actually at home? Oh gosh, probably seven. Okay, <laughs> could I could use seven voices from time to time. Yes. It's actually a common thing to, to have di uh, guitars in different tuning, uh, depending on, on the song. The most popular of which is called drop D tuning, which uh, you will hear a little later when I play one of my own compositions. Um, so for that song, that uh, Rosa just sang so beautifully, I needed to retune one of my seven, maybe it's eight guitars <laughs> for that specific piece. But um, we're back to uh, standard tuning now. <laughs> piano etude. He didn't take the piece very seriously. So its original form is a piano solo. He takes an incredibly quick tempo if you have a chance to just Google him playing his piece, which is recorded amazingly, early 20th century recording. Um, but of course you'll recognize the piece in many different forms. A strong melody is just a popular tune. I think about the serenade of the Ständchen of Schubert, which a cello, a violin, everybody wants to play that beautiful melody. Uh, and this is one of those pieces that I wanted to sing. So we have a, an arranger uh, who put this together for us um, off of another score for guitar and voice. In any case, we add bass to it instead of a flute, if you can imagine. So it's <laughs> anything lends itself. We all have the melody at times, and that's what's really cool about this piece. <clears throat>
Spanish classical vein. It's uh, a song, a tune called Anonymous. <laughs> no, it's a tune called Romanza by Anonymous, right? Do you know who wrote it, John? Romanza. Romanza, okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, this was my father's favorite classical guitar piece. Um, and so here we go, Romanza. <laughs> I'd like to play one of my own uh, comp compositions. It's called Prelude Sueño. Sueño means a dream. So uh, I think it's probably because of a dream that I had. I'm not sure what the dream was, but anyway. Uh, this is the tune that I was telling you about that um, requires uh, a different tuning. So I'm instead of the typical guitar tuning, which is E, A, D, G, B, and E, I've no now tuned down my lowest E string to a low D to give it a much greater sonority, a much lower sonority. Um, when I first was uh, composing this piece in my mind, I didn't consider that. I thought I was just going to play in standard tuning, but I thought it worked a lot better playing it in what's called drop D tuning. So here's my uh, composition, a very short, called Prelude Sueño. It was recently pu published by Lafco Music Publishers in England. and. Um, I don't know if I've played this live, so this might be a world premiere. <laughs> anyway, pray this swing on.
Thank you so much, and I'd like to end my uh, solo guitar feature set with uh, a set of four setianas. So setianas are from Spain. They're very short uh, dances, um, and each one is probably less than a minute long. So here are the four setianas by Sevigas. and English connection loosely in these next pieces here, yes. A theme of our program. <laughs> Through sunny Spain. <laughs> Winter. 
circle of fifths that shows up in these minor keys and these shifts. If you ever want to look at the lesson on circle of fifths, this piece will show up in there, uh, along with oh, autumn leaves and a few other those minor traveling pieces. <laughs> Jupiter and Mars with a 
so many of us did our first solo. Five or six people, family members, you know, required to be there. I'm just thinking it takes us back to our very early roots of having a, a truly in-house and intimate performance. Thank you all for joining us this evening. We will um, be on Zoom, so if you go back to the link that you, that you got for the concert, just click, there's a Zoom link right there. We'll be right there in one minute.